So I think the best thing that came out of that last episode was the fact that Venice now controls uh, four cities. And that is uh, actually a lot more than half the nations that are so far still in the game. So I promised you guys we'd go over the info addicts, and again, India is on top, uh, but England not too far behind with their acquisition of more cities. Uh, they're approaching rapidly, and they're right along the uh, the tail. I guess they're on the tail of the Indian population, at least in terms of this category in specific. Uh, Mayans are doing good too. Songhai's doing good. Spain also in a pretty good situation. Portugal, I think, has lost quite a bit. Portugal actually ahead of America. I'm surprised at that. I wonder why. Well, I guess because Portugal lost a city that didn't have that much population, and they ganged Stockholm, which was in a good sit, uh, good spot to keep growing. So uh, this city here is probably going to remain at about two population. Maybe it'll get a little bit more than just two population. It'll probably get to like, you know, I think it was at six, but it took forever to get to six because there's nothing out here. There's no resources. There's nothing. Um, unless, of course, I'm thinking that Tunga is... Uh, maybe if they're lucky, Tunga's like working most of these tiles to the south of the island, and then uh, this city's maybe, I don't know, working some of these things. I, I don't know. But Stockholm is going to be a good city to continue to grow this farm. There's there's lots of possibility for food yield in this region, a lot more than uh, in, in, the, in the other one. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. We've got three, three, four, three. Lots of golds. I mean, this is an excellent. Oh, there's four here. Uh, two, three. I mean, Stockholm's going to be a very big city for Portugal one day, so I don't think America's going to catch up just because they swapped cities like that okay let's go to crop yields we have england at number one technically america number two surprisingly even though they lost that city they're still doing okay uh manufactured goods let's go there again we're, con we're constantly seeing mayans the mayans and Songhai at the top which is so interesting because they've been so boring in this game like i, I don't feel like they deserve it they they they, I mean, they deserve it, I guess, technically to be on top of this category, but, uh, but man, they need to go to war. They need to do something exciting. I haven't been able to focus on the Mayans or Songhai for a while. I mean, I guess Songhai is a little bit okay. They've done a little bit. The Mayans took one city over. I don't know. I just need to see a lot more from them um, in order for me to kind of focus. I need, I need to see something from them. So that we can kind of focus on those empires and what they're doing. Manufactured goods, we've got England, of course, number one. America's still doing a very good job in a, in a close second. GNP, look at that. Venice making all that money. And that's kind of normal, but surprisingly, they're not number one. Uh, you would think that they'd be still ahead of England, but they're not. And this means that England's able to probably get up a pretty massive uh, army. Oh, I didn't even realize this. Oh, my gosh. I've never done this before. Uh, I guess it's re the reason is because there's not really good enough reason to do this. But... Anyways, uh, military manpower, this is the big one. Wow, the Netherlands at number one. That's interesting because they're at war with Ethiopia, and they're very close. How are they number one? Hold on, before I finish that statement, how the hell are the Netherlands number one? What? That makes no sense. I see way more units. Oh, Polynesia settled here. Interesting. Um, that doesn't make... Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Still... Still, though, right? I mean, because England looks like they have a ton. Maybe maybe techno technology-wise, or maybe because they're sea beggar. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't even know what a the Netherlands are trying to do right now. They're going after somebody, and they've got no borders. I, I, I don't know. Anyways, they're, they're number one. Barely, though. Just barely uh, above England. England will probably pa uh, pass them up as soon as they kind of rebuild the ships that they lost in the American War. Mayans doing good, but they're not doing anything with it. Again, India retaining a pretty strong military. Uh, Songhai at five. Persia at six, even though I thought they lost a lot, quite a bit, to Babylon. Rome in seven? Rome in seven and, tw and Spain is in 12? I've been talking up Spain this entire campaign. But that's that's because Spain has a uh, navy. Okay. And that's been like the biggest issue back and forth there is the nations that don't have a navy. Uh, okay, so we can skip over the rest. Um, let's just check technology. India, Persia, tied for number one. Uh, then we have the Mayans, Songhai, the Netherlands, and Portugal tied for two. England's still kind of a pro, kind of a barely, uh, they're, they're a ways behind. But everyone from 11th place to the top to number one is really, you know, they're all neck and neck. Uh, China, America, England, Spain, Arabia, they're all also kind of involved. I mean, only being three techs behind the leader is nothing. Um, everyone else, though, 12th place, Morocco and below, yeah, they're they're significantly falling behind here. Unless they really kind of get their stuff together, which Venice might be able to with their acquisition of, that, of three new cities. That's a pretty big deal. Um, and then finally, let's check on Wonders. 
We have the most wonders still with England. Persia still six. The Mayans still four. So everything else has pretty much stayed the same since the last time we checked here. Uh, let's check cities. So technically still, and and like I said, like I said, I think I think I, I I'm not 100 percent yet. It's turn four twenty. It's turn what is it? For, turn four forty two. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm thinking we're giving it to whoever has the most cities. So I don't know what we do here. We still have about a hundred turns, depending on what happens. If England just starts to dominate, then we're gonna give the win to England at turn five hundred. If nothing else is happening, um, but dang, look, the Celts aren't too far behind either. So right now, I think it's kind of you could argue these four sieves right here: England, America, the Celts, and Portugal. But, you know, you never know because look at that. Venice, out of nowhere, with one city, is now in ninth place. Out of, you know, how many sieves are still around? 35. Out of 35 sieves, uh, boom, Venice just jumped to the top. So you never know what could happen. And like I've been always, I've been talking up the Ottomans too. I think the Ottomans could come out of nowhere, start taking over a crap load of cities. But, uh, like, wars need to happen. You have less than 100 turns. The AI's got to get their stuff together. Because if not, this is going to be bad. So anyways, let's finally go to the next turn. Uh, we kind of got to discuss a little bit there. So we know that, and we've been talking about those four nations mainly, you know, those four nations that we saw in that category has been the nations that we focused in on for the most part in this empire, in this campaign. Oh my gosh. Look at all these submarines. Holy crap, Songhai. This might be bad. Well, I think they're going to, those are submarine units, so they're not going to be able to take, take any units over, but they will destroy every sort of Celtic ship that's nearby. Uh, one, two, three, four. So some guys at four cities. I mean, anybody could really swing in. I guess I shouldn't just narrow it down to those top four. Uh, and civs with four or three cities could come out of nowhere. Uh, anybody could come out of nowhere. I don't think we could just... I think we have a few civs that are the front runners, but to count out anybody at this point is is not smart. Not smart at all. And this is actually really, really good. Because we actually have the two sieves with the most cities going at it between each other, so they're distracting each other. And uh, you know, obviously, if England was going up a power, going, going up against a smaller power, which actually at this point, I mean, what can they really go to war with? None of the wars that England could go go after right now is going to be easy. It will all be pretty difficult for the most part, uh, no matter who they decide to attack. So it's just that point in the game. But still, but still, obviously, you don't really want to attack. America, I, I don't know. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Let's check on, on the Netherlands. So someone's going to be destroying Ethiopia within this, I'm thinking within this video. Someone's going to approach it. I thought it would be the Netherlands, but they're pretty distracted by going after somebody. I don't know who it is. I completely forgot. It must be Babylon, wasn't it? Is it Babylon? Arabia is supposed to be helping out attacking Babylon as well. So nothing happening here. Brazil growing in a, quite a big way. They've got themselves a whole bunch of units. Siam denounced Portugal. Still no Manhattan projects built. That's why we go to turn 550. That's exactly why we go to turn 550. I mean, who knows? Venice could win this game. How awesome would that be? I don't think anyone picked Venice. Out of like the thousand comments usually for these, uh, for these campaigns, I don't think anyone picked Venice. That would be crazy. Still waiting for a campaign like that. Still waiting to do a campaign where just a sieve just surprises you know everybody by winning, because those are the, that's when it's really fun. When whenever like there's a campaign, I think the the last one that we did, um, the European AI only battle, that was really interesting. That Byzantium had won because you know it was really there were not that many people that picked Byzantium, and that's how I I, I like that stuff. I like that you know it's kind of a big surprise. Not all the time, you know. Don't get me wrong. Like I don't like it all the time. It is nice to see you know a sieve do well uh, that most people pick, like England in this scenario, which is going to be really interesting because, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm going to need to kind of game plan with you guys how, if England wins, I have no idea how I'm going to do a shout-out because, like, pretty much half. It's probably, like, about, like, more than... I, I'm not even exaggerating here. Probably over 500 commenters picking England. So I have no idea how I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to have to brainstorm with you guys. We'll talk about that as we approach the... Uh, the final finale, I guess, of this game, but I, I'm kind of worried about that, to be honest, because everyone picked England, and uh, and England is is winning, so wasn't expecting that many. I, I expected a lot of votes from England. I was expecting like a hundred or so, but but not at the numbers that we. I pretty much half of everyone picked England. Okay, so we have the Huns and the Mayans teaming up against Poland. That's a pretty good grouping. 
Uh, this could be really good for the Huns, potentially. They even could get a little, quite a bit of help from the Mayans. I'm actually underestimating the Mayans. I mean, they've got a lot of ships. They don't have that many land units. You know, th there's a lot of free tiles here. They actually have a lot of their stuff out here um, in the ocean. Technically, they could easily grab this Zulu city and be up to five cities. Yeah, they could do that quite easily, but they haven't done that. Some guys backed away from uh, the Celts. I do want to see how the, the the Huns are going to how they're going to approach Poland here. Now Poland has no navy. That's a positive thing. Oh, and they're embarking their units. That's so bad. Oh, that's really really bad. Yeah, that's not that's that's not good. Uh, we've dele we've delegates to assign historical landmarks and the embargo of city states. Okay, we knew about this. Let's go to the next turn. Very lucky at how fast these turns have been processing. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Believe me. Knocking on wood. But um, uh, very happy at how fast they've, they've processed. And I think part of the reason is just like there's less there's less units. Less AIs are building units. There's not that many tiles that they control. You know, at this point, ooh, look at this small fleet here. Is that going after Ethiopia? Is that the fleet? Oh, there's a sea beggar. So the Netherlands will take over this city. If Wait a second, though. Who processes next? This I think this ship might get destroyed. Oh, it doesn't matter if it gets destroyed. There's a second sea beggar here. Where was that fleet going? What was that even for? And China, same thing for China. Where was that where was that random group of units? I mean, here it is. It's like all scattered, but what was that even for? All right, so now we're going to have the Netherlands at four cities. We're starting to see more and more of these four cities pop up all over the place now that we approach turn 450. Now we have India at four cities, Venice at four cities, um, the Netherlands at four cities. Who else do we have? We'll see a few more, but that's like the magic number right now. Ugh. Yeah, that's like the, that's really the magic number. Let's see what, what happened. Historical landmarks was not passed, surprisingly enough. I guess, I guess the AI doesn't see a reason to have the historical landmarks or the bonuses for culture and stuff like that. Uh, so who attacked first? I want to see who's going to process because, okay, so Ethiopia is going to destroy this sea beggar. And that doesn't even matter because they're going to come in, swoop. It. Oh, my gosh, they did not take that over. How? Wait, wait, wait. How, how did that not, how'd they not take that over? Is it because India processes after the Netherlands? That way they don't get to, they're, they're essentially helping them out. Ooh, there it is. America has survived, which means that these both these two beasts, wait a second, did they peace out for anything, though? No. Luckily, Washington escaped that without having to give up anything. Hmm. So yeah, the two, two big nations have survived. Greece and China. Maybe that was what China was doing. Corneth. Uh Now, if China still had like the big, sh you know, un all the units here that they started off with, that that could have been better. Korea's nearby too. Korea might be able to contribute a little bit. Yeah, they've got the, there's their turtle. There's I'm sorry, their turtle ships. Uh, okay, Netherlands, what's going on? Is it going to happen or what? You've got two attacks here, potentially. No, because you're going to get... This one's going to get destroyed. Can the Sea Beggar not do it by itself? Do they need help? Mm, no. Oh, they're fine. They can get two... Oh, but look at that. There's a great musician that's going to be in the way. Great, oh, and that is that... Oh, okay, you took it over. I was going to say, geez. I, I didn't want another situation where we'd see the AI just do something unbelievably stupid. That was what my biggest fear was. Uh, the Celts in Greece. Okay, so everyone's going after Greece. Um, now, does anyone have a chance of taking Athens besides maybe Rome and the Ottomans? Not really. Well, the Celts do. The Celts do, but remember, they've got like most of their stuff destroyed by Sunghai. They, they can't afford to send anything out over this way. England's got a big military, but a lot of their navies are bugged out. Uh, something to kind of keep in mind. Oh, when did Ro oh, Rome just declared war? All right, so this might be the end of Greece. Um, and someone could pick up their... Well, let's see, where those sea turtles... Or the turtle... Sea turtles go. Where the sea turtles go? Boom, and then the Ottomans join in too. Okay, so this might be interesting to see kind of a race here. Um, I think it would be much more beneficial for the Ottomans to gang this because uh, Rome is too far behind. Rome would only be grabbing their second city, uh, whereas the Ottomans would be grabbing their third city. That's a pretty big difference. Celts launched a sneak attack against somebody. And uh, Maria is building up a sneak attack against somebody else also. So if the Netherlands have four cities now, there you go. 
and can they can they make it towards Greece? Maybe. The uh, the the turtle ships are going to really help out the Chinese, especially for distracting. I'm thinking they're going to distract Alexander by quite a bit. Although if they don't even start to melee attack, I don't I don't know. Wow, this is going to be a very interesting race. It's pretty much between the Ottomans and Rome to see who can take Athens. Now the problem is that Rome has land units. The Ottomans have ships. Uh, how, how have the Huns been doing against Poland? Nothing really. And luckily for the world, England doesn't have anything over here. Spain joining in. Oh man, poor Greece. But yeah, the Huns aren't doing well, but the Mayans are now uh, helping out Attila. You could, you could say that. There's a battleship. There's a carrier. I don't know if they have anything on board. They've got a few infantry units that they're going to land, an artillery unit. Okay, so we might see the end of Poland. The Huns, this would be the Huns' fourth city technically too. They're just a little bit more scattered, and it's, least, it's probably less likely that they'd, you know, do anything effective here with kind of having a four, a, like a scattered four cities. Although, I mean, I guess the only person that's not scattered is England. America's pretty scattered in their cities as well. Wow, lots, lots of money in the treasuries. All sorts of money there. Mm, naval escorts Portugal launching a sing attack, attack against somebody. I don't know who it is now. Maybe, oh, it's probably going to be Greece, isn't it? Polynesia, maybe. That'd be smart for Portugal to go after Polynesia. That'd be very, very smart. All right, now they're starting to surround this second Greek city. Uh, China's still having some issues landing in, in that island. Okay, here it goes. Who's going to take it? Who is going to take it? Will it be the Ottomans or will it be Rome? Now, here's the problem, is that Rome is going to get significantly weaker uh, as they, I mean, more than likely, they're going to lose something. I mean, maybe not significantly weaker. That's a big statement, but they will get weaker. And England is just is right there. They're right next to Rome. So we could see like an attack from the English of the north to attack the, uh, the Roman capital. Mm, well, I don't know. England's, I think England's been pretty preoccupied. They could have probably attacked Rome at any point. Boom, Athens in the yellow. So Rome has several units. So they've got two melee units, two artillery. Wow. Uh, and they have one privateer as well as a unit that is embarked that could attack Athens. I think that Greece processes first. If, if Rome processes next, though, then I think they'll take it over right now. I'm willing to bet they'll take it over right now. Let's see. I can't remember. There's so many sieves still left in this game. If it's Rome, Augustus, I think he could take it now. No, it's Greece. So he's going to lose units. Rome is probably going to get a few units destroyed here, unless, of course, they attack the Ottomans. And no, that's not as much as I thought. They could still potentially take it, but actually, no. This is going to go to the Ottomans because I think Rome goes next. They're going to bring it down to the red, and then you know the Ottomans are just going to reap the benefits. They're just going to walk in. Carthage and Russia, I'll have to look at that. Let's see. Here goes England's turn. Ooh, you better watch it. You guys better watch it. Okay. And here it goes. Let's see. And the Ottomans will take it. Yep, just like what we thought. Rome bring it, brought it down to red. Then they've got a privateer, an ironclad, as well as two embarked units. Bam. There you go. Ottomans here. This could be some, This could be like the beginning of something really big. Could be really, really big. I've always had my money on the Ottomans, but I, I don't know. Uh, they've got to keep moving here. Anyways, guys, I'm going to stop right there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.